Hello and welcome to this episode of the LNUR line. Uh, and we're going to be discussing winners of the Brick Train Awards 2023, which have just been announced. I'm Richard from uh, LUKR, Lego UK Railway, a Lego train club in the UK. Uh, and we also have with us Miller. Hello. Uh, ben. Hello. Will. Hello. Ed. Hello. Rory. Hello. And Micah. Yo. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, there's no Andrew today. He's busy. Um, okay, so we'll move on. Uh, no news or Lego ideas this uh, this episode. We're just going to talk about the uh, the awards. So uh, let's start. I think it'd be nice if we started with. Um, does anyone want to uh, name some British winners? I think we have a very obvious one, and he's on the podcast. It's Ben. And his Studdington, Studdington layout won uh, the best individual slash group display uh, globally. So well done, Ben. Thank you. Do we have any other obvious uh, UK winners? Oh, Hod Carrier won Digital Loco, didn't he? Yeah, he won with the flat. Yeah, that was really nice. Uh, any more? There were, a lot, there were quite a few entries of British stuff. Um Mostly Australian, British, though. <laughs> yeah, mostly Australian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> British bricks had a Deltic and a, a Class 14. Um, so we, I quite like a tornado it. as well. There was a tornado in Asia, I think. Um, it is in Asia. I quite like Lego Train Build's uh, digital um, uh, breakdown crane. Yeah, that was really nice. He, he needs to build that. He needs to live up to his name and build that. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> Lego train to... renders that should that should be his username. Someone made a mallard. Yeah, I think there were yeah there was a digital mallard. Was it digital or was it built? Uh, best digital loco. Oh, there we go. Best digital Stum- loco. Stumbled on brick. Stumbled on the brick. Yes, that sounds familiar. Yeah, some yeah, some the, really nice British. The stuff. global winner. Sorry, the global winner, best consist, full train, um, the Orient Express by Mariski. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, from Europe and Middle East. And it looks very, it's a very good model. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a really nice one. I think that's ideally what the set should have looked like. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's probably what a lot of train fans were, were saying on the comments on Facebook and Instagram when it was posted. Um, that orient, was that, about there, wasn't there? That Orient Express one was the easiest decision we made. <laughs> we all put a, our top five for each category, and then we looked at the, the first category we came to was consist, and we looked at it and went, oh, so we've all picked the same one for number one then. <laughs> so um, since we're on the topic of favourites, shall we start, um, perhaps if we start with Will, if you've got a... Just a favourite that necess- didn't necessarily have to win. Oh, um, the the one that, lit many. There was there was two uh, two particular entries that I really wanted to win. One of which I argued incredibly hard, and that's why Ben won. And the other one was um, <laughs> was uh, Joe's um, V two in digital, uh, which sadly I couldn't quite manage to argue was hardly for, as hard for, but. Uh, I really like his V2, and I particularly liked it because I, I knew it was one of the few digital ones I saw that I knew for a fact would probably be entered as physical next year anyway. Yeah, no, Joe, it probably will be, I would imagine. Uh, who wants to go next? Ben, do you have a, a particular favourite? Um, yeah, there was uh, one. Was it the? Um, I'm a stickler for you know, minimal use of stickers, and the more you can do in the brick is always good. And I did like the... Um, uh, the German zero one by Simon. Um, it just looked quite nice. The silver lining you'd done. Um, looks like it's I in remember the brick. that one. Have yeah. you got a link to that you can share in chat with the yeah the others somewhere, and we'll, we can all have a look at it. I think I, I think I do. Rem- I do remember a builder called Simon. Yeah. There we go. So, okay. So it just German steam engines. <laughs> yeah, there was. I, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm personally a fan more of the British locos, but I did think that was just a nice build to look at. That it's you know a couple of stickers on there, which are kind of what you need for the final detail. But you know, everything else is 
it's all done in the brick and I think it's just really nice um nicely done mm. and it's it's a German engine that's not black as well I was going to say I think that the big there are some lovely German and sort of Dutch locos but they because they're mostly black and red they tend to sort of blur into one in my mind and the yeah. dark dark blue one's really nice I, and, I found the uh, the uh, European Steam Awards uh, Steam category really hard because at the end of the day, all the best designs I thought were well, all but one of them were big German locos, and it was like, how do you pick between these? <laughs> yeah, I got a, it's another favorite. I like that I do. I'm a GWR fan, but um, so the pannier that was done for the railway children it was quite a nice um, model. Um, what is it by Terry 82 Box Hill? It was um, just a different different type of pan is sit in the brown of the uh, the railway children version. So it's, uh, it was quite nice to see that as well. Was that in Australasia? Uh, I think he's UK. Can't really tell. I've, I've, oh. I've got the page there open. It doesn't say which category it was in. I'll put the link in the chat there. But um, oh, It's one of the T-Fall locomotives. Ah, okay. That was it, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it was, it was nice. Nice model. Lovely. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I think so. Good selection there. Uh, we'll go with Rory next because he's next on my screen. So, um, my favourite was probably it was in the um, it was in the best constis cat category, um, but actually wasn't the train that actually I liked about this one. Um, it was the Bavarian D twelve steam engine with freight cars by. Pieter Post. But what I really liked about it was actually the display piece that was made for it. So this is really he always nice. has a nice base, doesn't he? It's yeah. So it's got this um, sort of low embankment with a field system and a little bridge going over a river, and just the detail in there. It's it's all every bit little bit. There's not just been oh we just need a bit of lap grass here. It's all been done precisely. And there's so many details there that to be honest, you almost don't notice that there's a train running along the top of it. The landscape itself is so nice. Um, so that was one that really stood out for me. But So possibly, to be honest, I, I initially, when I was looking for it, I looked at the wrong category because I thought it'd be entered into the display category, but it wasn't. Um, but yeah, I really, really like that one and all the detail that's gone into it. And also that it's not square. It's not built on base plates. It's all got, it's an unusual shape. They've got, it looks like they've got a slight curve to the track. It's just lots of effort and made it more complicated for themselves than they needed to. And I think that really shows in how it comes across, to be honest. Um, so that's one that really stood out for me personally. Yeah, his work fair. tends to stand out well. It's always sort of well fo photographed as well, which helps. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Really well presented. I, yeah, it does I, make a big difference. I will say that um, I actually feel his displays acted against him a little bit. Because we kept looking at them, going, "That's a fantastic display." Oh, there's a train on there. Yeah, it's like it, because you weren't your focus isn't on the train. I still keep forgetting how nice that train is on that on that display because like all you ever look at is the display. Yeah, <laughs> I said if if it entered that into the display category, that would make far more sense. But like I said, I I couldn't True. actually tell you what the train looked like, but I could describe the display. <laughs> So, I think, to be fair, if you'd entered two of those three wagons in the wagon category, they'd have probably done very well. <laughs> yeah, it's all really nice. Yeah, everything about it is good. As I say, the detail, it's the, the, the countryside is just kind of broken up nicely, you know, kind of like organic look. And it's just, yeah, you should have entered it into the uh, display category as well. It's very nice. Yeah, it should, it should have. I suppose we did have a bit of a chat in the, the kind of organizers chat for brick train awards about should consist, should we enforce some rules on photographs in the different categories and should consist literally be the train on some track. Um, but then it, it becomes even more admin work to then have to message the builder and say, your photo doesn't match requirements and things like that. So it's unlikely to ever happen uh, because of the number of entries, but Yes. Um, okay, thanks, Rory. Uh, let's go with Micah next, please. Micah, do you have a kind of favourite entry of all of the entries this year? Uh, I do, and this might come out of, you know, no surprise, but um, I'm really close with this builder, Seth Brecht. I, Seth Brecht, I follow him on Twitter, and, like, 
we always chat back and forth about, oh, hey, here's what you're building. Here's what I'm building. Um, this London Brighton and South Coast Railway Stradley four-wheeled coach is probably my favorite from this year. Um, just the simple design that he's done and especially the color he's put it in. Dark red is a very uncommon color for coaches people make nowadays. And it looks, it looks very good. And I like the way he the detailing on the windows and how he built it sideways and he has the has the bucket hinges as the door hinges it looks really good yeah he's got he's another one of those really consistently good builders i think he submitted a is that the four wheel coach or was that a different one sorry i missed that at the start no it it is the four wheel coach and i will it is the four wheel yeah it's nice put it in the chat here and it is yeah, a very we're trying. very yeah, we're good trying. model We'll try and link I, I all really of the. Uh... Oh, it's a bit of a delay. And I, Sorry, I tend to enjoy a lot of his models, and I love his design because he's able to put in the spoked wheels instead of using a common wheel <coughs> bracket. He's able to design it like that and then bring it over to and build it in a physical form, which I'm I'm very impressed by. One thing that we, when we were judging it, we were really confused about. What is it used for the buffers? Are those custom pieces? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, to this day, I still have no idea if that is an obscure piece or a custom piece. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing looking at it. It's like, you know, what are yeah, they? Looks, I'd like to use them. That does look like a custom piece. And I don't really think that's an actual piece that they go make. So, yeah, I think uh, but that's, this, that's, really that's, cute. that's very much, I think. Uh, when we were looking at things, one of the things that cost him was that we thought that those were custom pieces and, to be honest, didn't understand why you would need to make a custom buffer piece when there are plenty of pieces that would have done that job quite nicely. But uh, it, it is a fantastic-looking coach. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, can we have Ed next, please? So, as you're all very much aware... I'm quite a modern stock person. I've got obviously some kettles, but the my favorite model that I saw in the BTAs this year was easily that Stadler Flirt. Well, the two Stadler Flirts, but the, the digital ones by Hod Carrier, was it? Yeah, I, I knew you would pick that. Amazing. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not that <laughs> that was really that. predictable. It is oh, nice, no. though. It is a gorgeous looking multi unit, and I'm glad to see that it. It was a consistent one. But I feel like the consist section is very much tailored towards like uh, steam or diesel haul rather than multiple units because you can get more variation in a steam haul consist than you can with just one multiple unit. But it's kind of true, went, yeah. The techniques went into that flirt were incredible. I want one. And I, if I ever do a flirt, I probably will take inspiration from that because, wow. Are you going to send in royalty royalty check now? <laughs> no, I'm broke. Can I also uh, add in real quick is that the way they got those angles on that locomotive is very impressive. Like, I don't know what, how they built it. I don't know if they used uh, studs on the side, but it looks very smooth and very just very professional, I might say, and how they got those angles. Yeah, I, would I like suspect we'll see it built at some point as well. Hopefully, knowing uh, knowing Pod Carrier. Yeah, he's uh, he tends to build everything he designs. He tends to do it very well. That's okay, good. thanks, Ed. Um, Miller, oh dear, what, Miller. What do you, what do you want? Fav- <laughs> favorite, um, favorite entry doesn't necessarily have to be a winner. Uh, there was a Gronk, wasn't there? Maybe more than one. No. No. Was no. it yours? No. He can't yeah. like an entry. That's biased. <laughs> yes. Um. That, my favourite entry was mine. No. Uh. My favourite is the uh, best electric 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 locomotive. Uh, NS Motor Post three o two nine by Ties. Oh, that was really cool. Yeah. Just look at the different angles of the front end of it. The window shape, right. the bonnet shape, the yeah, it's got it all going on. That's the European entry, isn't it? 
Yes. I don't think it quite made it through to the global one. Yeah, it's really nice. It's quite a lot. Yeah, there's quite a lot there's going a lot on going in on. different directions. Yeah. Um. Yes, that one. That one. And it's that... yellow, so, you know, partly anyway. Well, allegedly. <laughs> Could be any colour. I think... Um... Yeah, I think my favourites, uh, there was a shunting layout actually by one of our members who lives in Australasia, James House. Um, and let me see if I can find that link for everyone to look at. Um, You're a shunting layout. Oh, dear. I, I really like that layout, although I felt a little bit... In fact, it was difficult for me to vote for it on the grounds that um, um, it basically exclusively uses block junction stock. <laughs> Yeah. Hang on, sorry, I'm trying to find it. I managed to make a note of it, but not include the link in the, the, the box. Bl Bloxley is what it's called. Yes, I yeah. just found it. If, unless someone else has posted it for us. Yeah, I've got the link there for you. Oh, thanks, Ben. Yeah, it's picked out as one of my favourites too. It's nice. Yeah, it's really nice little shunting layout. Um, uh, so I particularly liked. That one, I think the scenery is quite interesting. It reminded me a little bit of, because it's sort of an industrial warehouse type backdrop uh, with a very strange medieval building in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of reminded me of Levi's Inglenook. And also, I think it has loose ballast, which is obviously a win for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I really like that. And uh, the other one, which I thought, um, I think British Bricks is Deltic won the diesel category in that region, didn't it? But I yeah. actually think his class 14 for me was just a more interesting and a better model. No one likes the class 14. Boo. I heard that. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Boo yourself. It's not a it's it's one above a gronk and it's not a gronk. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the 14, though. It is a very nice model. I want to take inspiration for it for mine as well. I think part of my reluctance for the towards the Deltic was that I think Sam included only one image, and it was from that very low-down angle. So I kind of wonder if he wasn't happy with the nose or something, um, or he wasn't happy with the roof or, or something like that on the Deltic. Or um, but... bacon. Or he second, just couldn't be asked to add another post. I mean, that's that's also an option. Yeah. Um, Can I uh, <clears throat> go back to Bloxley for a second? Um, yes. It, it displays something that I felt there was an issue with with a lot of layouts that were offered this year. It's uh, It's got a decent track to scenery ratio. Quite a lot of the layouts that we had were technically extremely clever, very interesting railways, but had an absolutely appalling track to scenery ratio. There was too much track and not enough scenery. Is that like the uh, the banana yard is really cool? Oh, banana yard. As a standalone <laughs> scene. I'll just... Just, just to be controversial here, you say that there was a bad track to scenery ratio, and then... On the picture of Ben's layout, we can see a tiny little bit of track coming out of a tunnel. Yeah, it's an excellent track to scenery ratio. It's 99% <laughs> scenery. <laughs> I think what we're going wrong with Lego Railways is all these bloody railways. <laughs> bluff. Bluff. Rubbish. <laughs> what do you mean there's track? There's track. You don't need track. You just need but there's scenery. A, you might as well just, just build it. There's, there's a track to... We had a, <laughs> we did have a lot of conversations about uh, in every category that involved uh, displays, which was frustrating seeing as we only actually had for the main one the global category for it. And and more often than not, the final argument came down to uh, track to scenery ratio and how, like I say, the banana yard was a very very high candidate. It was very close to Ben's and the banana yard. I think were the final two in the European one. And the reason we went with Ben's was just because, as I say, the banana yard is really clever. Really clever. I love what they've done with that. But it's not as visually interesting <laughs> unless you've got several trains on it. Yeah, that's kind of true. It's interesting from an operational interesting point from of view. 
mechanical and operational, but it's not that visually interesting. Yeah, I, I think I would agree there. Um, any I'm more thoughts on the shunting there. layout or anything else uh, before we move on? Nope. Okay. Um, what about, we may have covered some already, uh, but another of the questions uh, on the uh, preparation list we prepared this time uh, was a favourite entry that didn't win. So I think we discussed, um, for me, we've already discussed it because it was James House's shunting layout. I really like that, the Bloxley, Bloxley layout. Anyone else have one to suggest? Joe's V2 again. <laughs> I really, really, really wanted that one to win digital. But, uh, uh, I mean, it was it was very much, uh, we all agreed with the final decision. Um, or more accurately, I agree. I, I I understood why they didn't want it, and, and we agreed, I agreed with what they wanted instead. But, um, yeah, I would love to have seen Joe's V2 win, because I thought that was, I think that's a really lovely uh, render. Yeah, it did, it did look really clean. Um, anyone else? Yeah, uh, Glenn, Glenn Holland made a 40-foot box car. I don't know the railway, but or the railroad, but it looks really good. And it looks very impressive for the scale it is. But, I mean, he won locomotive, but he didn't win best rolling stock. I guess I guess best the freight wagon. Best steam, yeah I guess best steam loco is a bit more prestigious than best freight wagon anyway hmm. uh, de depending on what you think so. that, but this just saying it is a very impressive model and just the little tiny details that he was able to incorporate it in that small of a size was very impressive oh, anyone else small is you know trying to get as much detail into that small space though isn't it Yeah, I think yeah, I think that is part of the part of the challenge. And I was quite surprised. One of the oh, the I think the best diesel loco. It wasn't one of the larger uh, larger models that won. It was actually a really small. Oh, the, the one cop. that won the globe. Yeah, because it's yeah. cool and there's a lot of detail. No, I, I that. that was a very easy decision. That one. Uh, there was a couple. There was a very small steam engine. I really wanted to win as well. Um, and what it was called now. It was the NS Loco 7 Kicker. I absolutely loved that. Yeah, um, I, and I, was, I, uh, I did a, a couple of small diesels I put in my shortlist as well, of which the cop was the one that won it in the end. Uh, very, it was a unanimous decision. We really all liked it. But uh, uh, yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Bit of detail in that, and it helped that one, at least one of the, uh, I think both the other judges had seen it in the brick as well and so could confirm that it looked great in the brick. That helps, and that did seem to influence a few of the judges' decisions. Being able to see, because of photograph, even we upped the photographs this year, and we included an extra image, so you could have five images in total. Um, and um, that even with all those images, I think it's still quite hard. Something that doesn't photo, if it's a black model, they don't tend to photograph very well, no. but they probably look really good in in the brick um okay let's move anyone else have a favorite entry that didn't win i do i think you've just posted one in chat didn't you go on then it's the it's it was in the asia australasia um and i love it but i don't love the name uh, my katsu 4400 articulated narrow gauge emu by uh, sekiyama I'm trying to find that. It's um, a white and green. Oh, that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was I nice. assume it, it might be white and blue, but I think it's white and green. <laughs> it was tan and green. I just thought my screen was mucky. Okay, it's tan and green. <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice little model. I like it. Mm. I'm, I'm kind of biased though because multiple units. I uh, I've just remembered um, one that I wasn't particularly enamoured with, but when the uh, when it was explained to us uh, about exactly what it uh, how it uh, what it did was very impressive, even though it didn't win the global. And that was I think the winner of the other wagon category in uh, Australasia. 
See what I'm trying yes. to find again. Um, I know which one that is. I'm trying to find it too. Yeah, which uh, isn't a lot to look at. It's it's basically a bus with some wheel uh, on rails with some, with some train wheels, but it transforms itself and drives itself on the road and on the rails, which is quite impressive for how small it is. Okay, uh, let's move on to. Uh, are we done with? Are we done with favorite entries that didn't win? Feels like we are. Uh, let's have a bit of a focus on the T4 builders. So the teenage fan of Lego builders, um, and I'll start because I've managed to make a note of some. Uh, so Saga Verk by Lewis L. I think it is. Uh, let me just share that with you guys. If the chat thing ever comes up. Ah, okay. Um, so I just I thought this was a really nice, even you know, even for a builder who isn't a T4, it was quite an impressive scene with what looks like a wood yard and a nice stone backdrop. Um, some interesting looking loco in a sort of good shed type thing. So it's quite a small area in the photo. Um, but it looks it looks quite interesting. It looks like a really nice start to a um, a kind of railway you could actually have fun with on a desk, just shunting wagons in and out, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's good that. It's good kind of a Western yeah. type of thing, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, it's nice. The other one that caught my eye, uh, which I am desperately trying to find, is, uh, I think it must be a Hungarian. Uh, is it electric? I think it must be an electric. It's got a pantograph, uh, but it's sort of blue with yellow ends. And I probably like it because it looks a bit British because of <laughs> the scheme. Yeah, I do like that. It's a nice little electric. Yeah, I think it I think it worked quite well. Um, I don't think it made it through to the, uh, the final, but there were quite a few entries in the T4 Loco category. There were some good, good ones. One I liked that didn't end up winning... Um, largely because from a prototype point of view, it wasn't actually spectacularly accurate, uh, was the uh, uh, the Hector LBR-182 by Henry Weisner, um, which I just absolutely loved how he'd managed to get all the printing on the side of it completely brick-built, including used, uh, using uh, the 1x4 curved slope for for what, what these, these two sort of rounded um, symbols on the, next to Hector Rail. Uh, I, I really, really, really liked how he'd done that, done that because I thought it was printed at first, and I looked closer and went, oh, wait a minute, that's all brick built. That's really impressive. <laughs> I don't like the I... brick built for it. That is nice. Yeah, that's um, quite something. I thought it was printed as well, but yeah, that's... The, the orange bits yeah. in particular, you just you think, well, there's no way he's done that with Lego. <laughs> yeah, but it's, that's brilliant, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I hadn't spotted that when I... Well, I I must have processed the entry, but I don't. I presumed it was just a big sticker on the side, so it's really impressive. It's not. From what I understand, uh, I was speaking to somebody who I think has seen it in the brick. He's kind of uh, he, he sacrificed some of the dimensions in order to get the brick built writing in. Um, well, and it it's all tall. everybody's. You know, you can measure. You can measure it. Uh, you decide what you, what you consider a success or not. But I mean, knowing nothing about the loco itself, I think that looks great. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have known had he. It's one of those things that the, the builder, the builder knows and kind of marks themselves down. But the average person on the street at the show probably doesn't know. No, and even some fellow Lego train builders probably wouldn't notice until you pointed it out. Yeah, I do recognize it. <laughs> Uh, so, any more uh, T4 builders particularly we're looking for at the moment? Uh, I quite liked the uh, Asia Australia again. Uh, EDI Comeng, Comeng, DMU uh, by Max. Yeah, Max, 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 Max. Was that the one got... the global? I don't think so. I don't know. We've got a link for that. It's it's grey with blues and it's got all different triangles for the yeah. livery. That one oh, the that 
Yeah, Just that's really good. Because of how we managed to capture that triangle detail with plates and tiles. We were yeah. incredibly impressed with that. Got it. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, that was a very nice multi unit. When I first saw it, I thought, wow. So I agree with Miller on this one. Very nice looking. Yeah, it's, it's nice use of the um the angle tires. I did like that, and yeah, lots of angles in there that they've managed to build all in the brick. It's really nice. Be nice to see it, uh, see it built one day, hopefully. Hmm. And if you if you squint your eyes while looking at it, it actually looks like a real loco rather than a Lego model. That is sort of true. Whereas there's others that are very good, don't get me wrong, but if you squint your eyes, you can tell that it's not a real photo. Don't mark your gronks down like that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's the orange and blue livery that gives them away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I like how it's on the underbody as well. One thing I do find that most people miss off of like underbodies of coaches and multiple units that's just because uh, they fall off on the track. That's, that's, why the only, that's why the only area you can view my subway trains is on the subway station. That way you can't see the underneath. Ah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I find that's where you can find the most detail. So I always try and put extra effort into the underbody where people might not notice it, but it's still there. I appreciate that it's gone to the effort for that. Miller, is that not because you put a lot of profanities under yours? <laughs> I, I, I've been advised not to answer such questions by my <laughs> lawyer. Uh, anyone else have um, a teenage fan of Lego builder they'd like to highlight while we're while we're here? Yeah, um, I've already, I've already. Oh, go ahead, Ben. I was just going to. Um, yeah, I already mentioned the pan here, but there's that Sir Nigel Grizzly. Um, I think that's the T-File category, wasn't it? So yeah, he uh, by. Uh, Gans Hubo is that? Um, it's you know very nice. You know, it's I'm just looking at it again now, and I think it's that all proper Lego. You know, Lego rods as well. It's, it's, it might be a custom bit in there, but actually, you know, the whole thing looks like it's built just out of Lego, no custom bits, and it looks really nice. Um, you know, there's quite a few people who have done their own kind of uh, A4 designs and. Uh, but this it's nice one in the uh, T file category. Oh yes, lots of detail. Yes, that one did stand out when I was posting it. Yeah, it's nice. There's um, there's I would also say that like the the T file the category for the um, T file displays lots of good stuff in there. There was <laughs> yes, I think yeah. particularly because the. The T4 categories allow digital entries as well, so it's sort of easier for people to put an entry in for that one. Um, yeah, but it's a but good mix of digital and... It, it is a good mix, brick. yeah. Yeah, there's some yeah. really nice really nice work there. I imagine that was quite hard to judge. Uh, Micah, did you have one to suggest for T4 builders? I was just going to say... Um... And I've already tooted Seth Brick's horn, but he's a pretty good builder. And he's I I can't wait to see what he produces in the future because he's always he always just has a design and he always just goes for it. And I'm always impressed by his builds, and that's all I have to say. Yeah, funny enough, I've just come across scrolling through the um T4 Loco entries. I've just come across two I really liked. The Festiniog uh railway small England 040. Um, and uh, both by Seth Brick and the uh, NWR Dennis BR class. Uh, what is that? Eleven oh oh one. That's uh, they're both really uh, really nice. So we'll include uh, include links to those. Do you want me, I'll put them in the chat for people to have a look at. Any more T4 builders while we're looking at that in the background? I quite liked the uh, Brew Class 24 by Christoph Muller. <laughs> Definitely not a T4. Mentally? 
twice over. Oh maybe. well, possibly mentally. <laughs> I quite like um, the Granite Rock Co. Number Ten by Henry Mack. It's uh, basically what what we would know as a USA tank, one of the uh, World War Two uh, import American tank engines. Which obviously one must have, some of them must have ended up back in America because this one's very clearly um, uh, American spec one. But he's got a, he's done a good job of catching the shape and uh, uh, the shape and feel of Loco. And the rods, although that's a heck of a lot of custom rods to achieve that. Do you have a link for that one? Because I am struggling to find it at the moment. I couldn't tell you which uh, thing it is, but I have a link on it. There you go. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. you can sort of see the relation to the, the USA tank. I mean, it is exa- it is literally a USA tank, just from America. It's bits. more stuff on it. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, that was a nice one. Thanks, Will. Anyone else? The one that I really liked was I think I ended up winning actually was the um for the uh, display category was the uh, Royal Lake Interurban Railway PSI. Oh yeah. Um, I just I'm a really big sucker for sort of small layouts with sort of shunty things that you can like I say put on a desktop or things like that, and. Again, I like the fact it's not square. It does something different and really sort of takes a very small thing but suggests more. And so, yeah, it's just really nice and really clean and simple the way it's been done. Nice execution on it um, without be, having to be massive and everything. So, yeah. yeah it's re- it is really nice. And I'm a bit of a sucker for the dark tan and um, mm. olive green combination as well. I think it, it's, it's really it's good on green, that sort of... Which makes a difference. It's nice to see yeah. that it's not green. I do like his use of uh, space and how he's, uh, he's he, he makes a conscious decision that he only the only bits he built were the land and the lack of land you don't need to build because you know what it is by the context of everything else. Yeah. Uh, that, I thought that was quite clever. Yeah, it just really works in such a small model. It just, yeah, really, really works. Yeah, thanks for it. Yeah, I think that was worth highlighting. It's a, it is a really nice one. Um, I guess that's why it won. Um. Okay. Are we are we finished with T four builders? Any more to add on before we move on to some other queries, other questions? I guess we can move on. Okay. Um. So, um, every year we seem to have this question, but it usually gets some pretty interesting answers. Um. So. Uh, we did actually record a Brick Train Awards podcast last year for the winners, um, and then I think the audio got corrupted or something, so it never <laughs> never made it out. Um, but what if uh, if you could um, remove a category and add a new one, what would it be? Uh, and I had a suggestion on the Train Tech forum uh, on Eurobricks uh, the other day from the user Commander Wolf uh, suggested a purist category. So presumably a don't know whether it would be loco or something else, but a category in which you can only use Lego, you can't use third party wheels or rods or power systems, which probably narrows down a lot of steam locos, I would imagine. Um, but anyone want to start with um, removing a category and replacing it with something else? That what one would you, you like said, to see? That one you said you could call it the rivet counter category. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to start by immediately removing the purist category because we don't need that kind of sentiment around here. Thank you very much. <laughs> the display category for the normal adult displays because uh, I think it's a crying shame that Ben only won global. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think the um, that's the thing. There's quite a few entries in the display category. Does that would that allow it to be re- have reasonable winners? Perhaps next time you've got that maybe level. because okay. it it has previously had um that that category or its variation did previously have regional winners but then when we were looking at um which categories to run last year because the categories haven't really changed um we decided we should probably merge some categories we merged the asia and australasia regions as well because they tended to have much lower entry numbers than uh, Europe usually has more entry numbers by 
a few a hundred or two hundred or something entries over all of the categories. Um, and then Americas is pretty popular, and then Asia, Australasia. So it's yeah, it's a bit of a delicate balance. We definitely don't always get it right. It's kind of hard to predict what people are going to enter in a way. Yeah, I, I uh, we we certainly in the European one were the was a great select uh, there really was a really good selection of uh, european entries for the um group or individual display there was however quite a dearth of choice for the uh, the actual the tfall one there wasn't a lot of tfall um which uh, you know we were it, I, none of them uh, the, the, this isn't to say any of them were bad but none of the European ones particularly caught my interest. <laughs> you know, they, they tended to be a lot of um, uh, track versus not a lot of scenery, which didn't help. Uh, any other suggestions for swapped categories? I'd get rid of uh, the steam category. Recording in progress. <laughs> and that, I oh, yeah, this, is, this it. is a wild idea. Um, I know this is brick train awards, but could you incorporate like train vehicles of some kind, as in like maybe some lorries owned by the railroad or or the railway, or maybe uh barges that have tracks on them? This is just an idea I've been thinking about. Wouldn't that go under other? Um, in the case like uh. There was a few um, road rail vehicles that were in the uh, uh, other rolling stock one. I can't remember the name of the category now, but the what's it called? There's a spe the special wagon, but actually, if they're powered, if they're powered, maybe they should have been in the other loco. Maybe. What about narrow gauge locomotives? I know the standards are standard gauge, but maybe there should be a narrow gauge entry. I don't think like there's a narrow gauge local locomotive in general or global and then maybe by regions they sort of fit in the other locomotives category because there's not enough larger gauge or smaller gauge like so you've got two things you could split other into um three things locomotives that aren't steam diesel or electric which is a very small category locomotives that use our standard gauge, but use larger gauge and Lego gauge track, so mostly G scale, or locomotives at a narrow gauge at any scale. And I don't think you'd have enough of any of those for separate categories. No, it was suggested we could try and split the locos up by the loco categories up by scale. But actually, I think a lot of builders probably wouldn't know what scale they might well, you could be building at. Make it real easy. You could have six wide, seven wide, and eight wide scale. <laughs> Why this is not a scale? <laughs> okay, I'm I'm gonna say what I say every year, and that is, you shouldn't be doing it by geographical region the person comes from. You should be doing it by geographical region that the rolling stock comes mm, from. I so mean, you don't have to judge bloody American stuff, and the Australians don't end up judging all the best British stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, that would make sense. I, but well, the problem there again is the spread of entries because, as Will knows, he probably judged, I don't know, three hundred and fifty entries or something for Europe. Um, if you suddenly judge all of the British stuff, you're probably going to end up with even more than that. Um, I'm willing to pay. <laughs> also, also, Will, think of it this way: you'll be stuck judging. The GWR stuff, which all look the bloody same. <laughs> well, that's easy. That's very easy. How do you pick a winner? Nah. They're all the same. <laughs> well, I'd have to disagree there. Some of them are <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's not yes, true. Ben, You've got ben two... is a very big GWR fan. You've got three GWR locomotives. You've got four six O's, which all look the same. You've got panniers. Which all look the same, and you've got fourteen hundreds, which are actually interesting. You've not <laughs> looked for them fast. properly, have you? You need to look at them closer. There's so many differences. I lived in Cornwall. I looked close enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that maybe is a good point. Although we can come back to this swapping a category query if we want to, but that's maybe a good point um, to introduce 
an idea at uh, I can't remember whether it was my idea or somebody else's I've stolen from social media because I did not make a note um, but essentially the idea is that rather than asking judges to judge all of the entries in um, in a region which is 14 categories ish uh, what about asking judges to judge set categories worldwide so one set of judges judge all of the steam diesel electric and other locomotives one set of judges do all of the wagons worldwide one set do all of the t fault entries worldwide so th any thoughts on that yes i don't think it's a bad idea although i would probably say i don't know about whether you'd want a separate t fault one because when well, some categories, T4 categories, there's not a lot to show. <laughs> the problem is the t foals keep getting too old to be in t foal anymore. How rude. <laughs> Stop aging, you selfish t foals You can talk. I saw but you. Miller, we get we get new people coming in and more pe new people to, you know, enjoy this hobby instead of, I don't, you know, I don't the like same the people current... sticking around. I don't like the current people. I don't want more. <laughs> right. I think we should gauge T fold on our mental age, and then we can all be in the T fold category. <laughs> so, so you're saying that Miller's going to win if we judge it by a uh, mental age, right? No, no, Miller will just get beat by a larger number of children. <laughs> I won't win just because I can't be asked. <laughs> Every year, it's just a thirteen with one extra extra Gronk added to it. <laughs> You're expecting a lot if you want one extra wheel each year. Right. Any more uh, ideas for swapping categories? Um, so I've said removing this idea a category before. or adding one. I've said this idea before. I don't know which one you'd swap it with, but a category where you show your ingenious. Uh, build idea or technique that you think no one's used before I think that would be hard to judge but it would be quite yeah. hard to see bear in mind a lot of the decisions we made came down to well this one looks beautiful but it's got lots of 3D printed parts or it's it's it relies heavily on lining tape or prints and then this one looks almost as pretty, but also you can see how they built that out of Lego and that's pushed it over the edge. Um, so I feel like we're already making those judging judgments, just sometimes not consciously. Oh, okay. If anything, it feels like, like a special prize to be done at the end rather than a separate category, just a, and we're like, we have one prize globally for, this one was a really clever build as an extra thing, if anything. So, for so instance, good. the I think it was the uh, best European... I'm trying to get the uh, winners up. The best European steam engine. Um, yes. If you look closely at the tender, you'll notice he has brick-built some slopes in it to recreate the panel lining of the actual tender, and that's what pushed me over the edge in particular. Mm -hmm as going for that one as the best locomotive in the European category because that's a detail that I might not recognise off that particular class but I recognise it off other locomotives and the fact that he's gone to the effort to put in some detail to make what would otherwise be quite a boring flat tender just a little bit more interesting um, absolutely won me over with that one Yeah, it's it's, it's that kind of thing I'm thinking is well, it might be an idea, not just changing the categories, but having some something that covers all categories, so like best attention to detail, best use of um, just in the break, best use of stickers maybe. There's certain things that you could cut across all categories and you could pick out as like almost like highlights rather than winners, but there's something there that... That's quite a nice idea, yeah. I like the like best use of stickers, best use of print, yeah, and also That's... maybe you know, like something for extra functionality because obviously the trains have got piston rods or or not, and the wheels go along. But actually, is there something else like the crane locomotives or um, like tampers or something that does something else? Or if it's got open doors on it, I know some people do trains with the opening doors. It, 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 anything like that that um, that might be kind of a, a category that can get cut across as well. So it gives people. 
um, different chances to win, perhaps if you had something like that as well. It might be interesting. It's where highlighting, you know, some of the things we're talking about here, we're picking out bits of models we like for particular reasons. If you had kind of categories to help pick that out, that might draw attention to you know what some of the judges see. You know, now this didn't win this category, but there's this particular bit that was really good. Um, you know, so something like that that might be good. Yeah, I really like that idea. And a, a couple of people have asked, can we do like some runners up positions for the categories as well? An honorary um, mentions would be good, not necessarily, yeah. runner-up, but something that caught our eye or something like that would be quite a cool thing to do for each category. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to have it for each category if you don't think was anything that was like oh yeah i wanted to mention that as well then fair enough but um something that spot uh, kind of reminded me of the judging process that ben said even if you didn't have a separate category of it encourage people to do videos of their builds because if you've got a steam engine and it's a static photograph and it's black you're not really going to get the hang of it whereas if you watch the steam engine in motion you can see all the rods moving and it gliding around the curves so you can go oh that thing works, which is, you know, it's like, a, it's it's a bit like a dating site at the moment. You're going purely on aesthetics and you don't know if it's anything under the hood. <laughs> uh, that's a, a niche kink for a dating app. Uh, yeah, I think, so we do allow people to link to videos in the description, but it doesn't, for various reasons, it doesn't auto link the links in there. No. Um, so we can maybe look at, putting like a more definitive this is a you know this is a box for a youtube link or vimeo it does sort of rule out i don't think chinese builders can use youtube but there must be an equivalent service um and actually i don't think we get we get a lot of builders from japan korea usually but not really from china anyway um but they might um use instagram or tiktok obviously in china um oh yeah yeah you know, might be able to share stuff in the social the, media, um, so. the other thing that was suggested uh by let me think who it was it was one of the judges this year uh damien gratz great right? um so he suggested that maybe we need to give more specific guidance on particularly for the loco and wagon categories on okay you've got these five photos so can we give some more guidance to builders on for the main photo and actually, we do have a, this is how to do good photography uh, for your train models on the website. And we share that during the thing, but people just don't see it sometimes. Um, but, you know, for the main photo, this is what makes a good photo. So, you know, having some dirty laundry in the background is probably not an idea. Usually putting stuff on the carpet is probably not a good idea. Um, having a nice clean background helps or having a natural background with some trees and distance kind of works. Um, and then for the subsequent photos, yeah, not all builders include photos from all angles. So like Will was saying, it is kind of hard to judge the model based on that if you can only see two, maybe three sides of the model. It's it's kind of the same thing as um, when, when it's very hard to judge the digital ones because obviously you don't know if that thing would hold together in real life. I mean, a lot of the photographs of the real life stuff is only one step removed from that because it could be that they've put that down and if they so much as breathe on it, it'll disintegrate. Whereas if you've got a video of it moving, then you're like, well, that that clearly holds together. All we want really is a video of them picking it up. I was That's just about to say that. Is, <laughs> how gingerly they pick it up. Is it been indication of... There's yeah. enough members in this group who I feel like I don't want to upset them that hard by saying do a video of picking it up. <laughs> we, we can call it the Levi category. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I mean Ed's, uh, some of Ed's designs uh, <laughs> have, a, have an aversion to being affected by gravity. <laughs> but certainly some of mine, are, are, I've got to know, remember where to pick it up. It's, uh... Uh, I had a bit of a nightmare at Steam trying to um, find out how to get the roof of your rail car off, Ben, to try and change the batteries for it. Oh, <laughs> because the... I presume the whole roof came off, but actually only a small strip down the middle does. Yeah, um, no, you actually have to take the motor out and disassemble it at the bottom to change the batteries. Oh, that. okay. Yeah, I, I did not, not want to do that. Yeah. 
Um, okay, do we have any more? Um, I How have about of... a best bribe category? And oh, I'd be up for that. Underneath the entry, uh, it has to be written what the author offered to be to pay for their win. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, but the problem with that is you may have some judges who care about money and other judges like me who just want something funny. So, like, if you often offer me sixty nine pounds and sixty nine pence, I'm more likely to do it than if you offer me a grand, or if you oh, offer me forty two pounds, I'm more likely to get it. <laughs> That's what makes this this category so good because there's not a guarantee offering them large sums of money will work. Did somebody say forty two? Winner. <laughs> <laughs> here is here is my brew class forty two and also a pack of wine gums and a can of iron brew. Brew gums, diet coke. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> that would also work on me. You get what? <laughs> a, a duplo Just giraffe skewed, would probably skewed work. Skewed it slowly over. How, how this did, is I, my train model. You do you that. I judging you in the look at it. <laughs> um, yeah, any more categories you want to swap? Or shall I move on to another question? Uh, a subway category. Uh, I'm sure you suggest that every year and we just boo it and move on there, there, must be, there, must be, there must be enough people who enter and underground stuff for this to be a thing I, I don't think there is actually and one, one type of entry that we tried to encourage the other year and it didn't really work for the display categories a lot of people have Lego cities at home and oh, we, yeah. and they a lot of them have trains, so it'd be nice to see some more of those in the best train category, but I think maybe because most LEGO City builders probably don't care about trains to the point of building custom stuff, they just use uh, like LEGO City sets or something like that. Um, it, yeah, it never seems to have really caught on, sadly, because there are some really, if you look in Facebook groups and Instagram and stuff like that, there's some really impressive um, LEGO City displays with trains that are just in somebody's bedroom or shed at home um, that you would never see at a, an exhibition. And a lot of them are of, you know, exhibition style quality, I would say. They're, they're decent enough to look at. They're interesting. There's some nice custom work there. There's mm. some nice scenes with minifigures. So I think, I think the, the one thing that kind of stops those is that two-year rule that you've got. It's going to be yeah, mostly like built last years. So that's, the thing, you know, most of mine, and some bits of about old tears, but most of it, I could say, has been built over in the last couple of years. But um, disqualify those... him! Disqualify <laughs> him! No, it's it. It's it. I, I worked it out. I looked for my photos, and I, it, Wait, I can we say can't dis- just... we can't disqualify Ben because he uh, sent me a giraffe, so I've accepted the bribe. <laughs> but, um, um, but I think um, you know the. You know, some of those have been have been built up over a long time, and so that's a that that's the thing. A lot of my stuff I've got, I can't. There's not going to be anything new for quite a while now, so I couldn't enter anything perhaps again because it's going to be that means built, you could be a judge. A, I could be, but like, um, you know, as you if you're building the same layout and just getting bigger and bigger, it's difficult to re-enter it as because uh, it's not it's going to. Not get my past that two year rule. My interpretation is that I'm pretty certain I can't remember what the wording this year was, but certainly last time I entered, the wording was has to have been worked on in the last two years, which is very different from has to have been built in the last two years. I think it's the majority, wasn't it? Built since yeah, September I'm 2020, not, I think, wasn't it? For instance, uh, were I to enter my, my current layout, my current layout next year would still be the whole thing would still be less than two years old but it's part it's going to be part of a much much bigger railway yeah i think it'd be very unlikely to say oh, in 20 years time when i've built this stupidly large preserved railway if i put that in so and somebody's going to look at that and go well billingate was built in 2023 you can't enter that and it's like yes but there's the rest of the latter valley railway <laughs> which wasn't built <laughs> in 2023 and it's all part of the same railway <laughs> I think there's always going to be a bit of a difference between sort of a bit of rolling stock 
um, which, yeah, you should build in the last couple of years, whereas a layout, especially a big one, it's always going to be built over a bigger period of time because no one's got the time or the money to be able to build exhibition quality layouts and just churn them out um, years after years. So I think there's always going to be more flexibility on that sort of layout display categories versus the the other sort of locomotive or stock kind of categories. Yeah, it's kind it's of slightly different interpretation, I guess. We've kind of left it purposely vague on that one. Yeah. Is, is um, it not maybe separate? Because I I wonder how many people have gone, like, especially if you get a couple of nice railways early on, and they've taken a look at the individual slash group ca category and gone, there's no point entering that. Mine's never going to win. If you had like a, a specifically a display category, um, uh, well, I mean, one thing is I think if you had a diorama category, then uh, Pieta Post would probably win that every year but he'd give you plenty to look at <laughs> but um if you had a if you had like a home dis a home layout like a home layout category and a display uh, uh, exhibition layout category then you might not necessarily get exhibition quality layouts but you'd get a lot of really nice looking layouts that you wouldn't have otherwise seen because they, they've seen the current category as it is now and gone there's no point entering that I think that's yeah, that's kind of true. If you get some really good entries um, early on in a category, does it put people off entering? Possibly. But I don't the, think there's a massive amount we can do about that, though. No, I, you I, could I don't do something. You do anything about that? But I think you could do something along the lines about the the size of the layout, perhaps, because like a smaller one is more achievable for, for most people. A bigger one, it, uh, mine's as big as it is because I've been collecting lego for years and years so i've amassed the bricks to be able to build something like that but actually you know you look at some of the smaller entries you had you know just as you know brilliant layouts but the small ones that actually that is possibly something there you can have you know you, you do a size by number of base plates or something i don't know but um there's something there to consider that, that might help more people enter as well we could that's one way of splitting up because we did get more entries this year so we could split it up based on size the problem, um, the problem I had when when I used to have a brick city was uh, if I had train stuff that took up all the table space, so I didn't mm. bother with train stuff. That's what got me onto building an underground because it was literally a layer underneath that wasn't affected. Um, coincidentally, Ben, do you know what my original brick built town was called? Go on then, tell me. Upper Studdington. Ah, oh, excellent. What Does that make sense? Upper Studdington. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, my original one is Brickend. That's, I've still got that built. Um, so at some point, Brickend will connect on to Studdington. So, um, you know, that's that, isn't that a dream of the club to maybe try and you know connect everybody's layouts up at some point to one massive beam. I off think. I do want to see Tunbrick Wells West, Billy Gate, and uh, and however much of Studdington exists by that point, uh, all just in one big preserved railway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> bigger. So the, only problem, the only problem is running trains around at one end. But <laughs> I want to so see renting out a giant warehouse. I don't know yeah. how much per month. And oh, here we go. Here's everything at maybe the preserved Lego Museum or something. I want to see all of those joined up with. Glasgow subway in the middle, joining them together with the four tracks. <laughs> we could have Glasgow subway under the table where it belongs. Ooh, <laughs> that's fighting talk. Um, <laughs> put it yeah, into a corner by itself. Also, also lonesome. Very important point, Miller. Mm. If we have Glasgow subway, we need one or both of Andy's underground layers connected to it as well. You can't have it all your own way. <laughs> I can, and last time I met him, you had to hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they had to place as the opposite sides of Shildon. <laughs> Every so often, from one side, you just hear, "Ooh." <laughs> You know what that is? You know what that is. We didn't want to upset you. We didn't. We didn't want to show you what a real underground where it looks like. <laughs> Right, on that note, um, I think we've covered uh, categories and swaps like that. Um, one sort of final 
point of conversation uh, that we could discuss is, and I think, and again, I've managed not to leave myself a note of where I saw this, but I think it was probably social media. And there was a suggestion that maybe the same builders are winning, maybe not the same category, but the same builders are winning multiple times in different years. Is that fair? Is there something we could do to make it fairer? Because it would be nice to sort of notice and um, showcase work of maybe more unknown builders. I think I think I sort of agree with the comment, actually. There are some builders um, who have won multiple times and yeah, they have very good models, but does it necessarily... You can't, you can't disqualify people for being good, though. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I that's fundamentally true. and absolutely disagree with that statement. Uh, I can only go from my experience of judging, which I only did it this year, but we did not give a flying fig about the name of the person who built the thing. We judged it wholly on the loco. There, there are, there's a couple of, um, certainly in the global one, there was one or two that I voted for the model, even though I'm not a particular fan of the, the builder. Oh. <laughs> um, um, if we're going to go like that, I mean, one year British Bricks won, and then the second year he didn't win, but then this year he's won again, so he, he hasn't won them all. No, I mean, it should go down to, I mean, it isn't, I don't make a seat. One of my favorite British builders at the moment is um, Joe Bloomfield. Honestly, none of his, none of the things that he entered apart from the V2, did I feel I would want to win the categories? Um, and that's why they didn't. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't think, and I'm sure he's won before, hasn't he, Joe? Yeah, Joe's won before. Yeah. I don't think any judge is going to look at him and go, oh, that was by the guy who won last year. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that a go. They they look at the model, and if you're good at your good at building models, then you're more lo- likely to end up winning. But there I are mean, for- quite a lot of prolific builders as well who build continuously, presumably all year round, and have you know five like Sergio, he has five or six you know new models pretty much every year to enter, and they're all really good. He won one thing, I think, despite all of those entries. Yeah, I think he won one. Prestigious one, if I remember rightly. <laughs> on on the un, on the other end of the scale, I mean, like you saw that I'd entered and gone, nope, just looking at my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's that, that's allowable. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Sergio Batista, despite all of those entries, and and ninety nine percent of them are really brilliant. Uh, he only won best digital wagon. Um, and that wasn't because we were marking against him. It wasn't because we were marking uh, uh, for him. It was just in that category, we we came to the conclusion that we felt that that was probably the best one in the category. Um, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how good you are. It's down to the individual model. So, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I think that was just, a fair... Just, fair just as a count, counterpoint to Will, I think the only the way I could think if you wanted to limit that would be to get the previous year's winners involved as judges the, the next year. So obviously then they can't enter because they're by, and that way you get them at least Which we do, year of them. We do um, kind of do that. So yeah. Joe, I don't think Joe's been a judge yet, but he is on my list next year to be a judge. He might not want to enter if he's got loads of good stuff to, yes. <laughs> good stuff to enter, I suppose. Um, yeah, we do try and rotate the judges now and, uh, which is why I kind of don't judge because it leaves space for other people too. Yeah. So I, I I, I'm a winner as well. So it's Ben's turn next time as well. <laughs> uh, so I think we're approaching probably over an hour of running time by the time I've edited out basically all of Miller. Any last comments? Uh. Well done to the winners. Commiserations to the people who didn't win but entered. Don't be off put from entering again next year. I think that's yeah. true. And actually, the bit, okay, the winners we kind of have to do because it's an award, but actually the bit I like is seeing everybody's models. The winners are kind of, we do it. Um, but as Will said, a lot, a lot of the categories, there's a lot more models that are kind of up there and deserve to win as well it's just how the judges pick on the day and don't be afraid to enter thinking that your model isn't good enough 
we don't like that attitude. If you want that attitude, you'd join a modelling uh, group. <laughs> not true. Yeah. I will count the rivets and I'll be very... Ju- no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would like... I feel like... I'd like oh, everybody to enter. Uh, if, you, if you've got a model and you're proud of it, enter it. It might not yeah. win. probably won't win. There's only one winner in each category in each region. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't end that. I had a great deal of uh, fun what, looking at all of the uh, many, many, many entries. Um, and if you do, especially if you do British and you are British, please enter them so I don't have to, if I'm judging next year, I don't have to judge 15 different German locomotives. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Nope. Okay. I was just going to say, just just enter. This should be a fun event that everyone who's in this community should do to show off their models and show the hard work they put into these models, whether they're small four-stud models to the big, big over 10 wide scale models. People should enter them. Enter them. People should see what your work and what you have been working on and just be proud of the fact you, you don't have to win to be accepted in this community and to show off your models. Thanks, Micah. I think that's a, a nice sentiment to finish off on. So thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, the winners are on BrickTrainAwards.com. I guess the Brick Train Awards will be back next year, but I haven't recovered from this year yet. Um, so look out for something from that. Thanks for listening and um, tune in again for more Lego Train fun. I think that's our tagline now probably. Thanks. Bye. 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 Hi. 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 I'm Andrew. Yeah. Am I, am I too late for the recording? <laughs>